Knowledge is power. And this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Week at 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lights are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll-free. Toll-free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Happy Election Day. This is Nevada Cannabis News Hour. To my right, our hostess with the mostest, Jen Solis. Hey. Well, to my left. To her right, it's Kurt Dudekot. And we have William Beach Baker, and behind the board, we have Lawrence, always making us sound good. Thank you, sir. And that opening was done, it was brought to you by Raymond Fletcher, who is so happy to have voted today. Have you voted today? That's the question. That's the question. Today is a very important day, and, and democracy in action today. Uh, polls are open. They opened at 7 a.m. They're open until 7 p.m., so you have... Oh, I forgot. We turned our clocks back. <laughs> you have a couple well, of hours. Yeah, we have three show. more hours. Three more hours. If you have not voted, get out to your polls and vote, vote, vote. Don't be sitting there uh, armchair, Complaining. armchair quarterback in uh, Wednesday morning because you didn't take the opportunity to get, get out and vote. More importantly, don't sit there and complain about your government, about the decisions people make on your behalf if you don't get up and take the opportunity to vote. Speaking of the electoral process, last week you were on hiatus and you were visiting my friend. My friend Bill. Bill I, Clinton. I, I did not him. inhale. <laughs> so not, were you thrilled? Oh, I was I was elated. I mean I was I not not physically, but I I, I was I was high as a kite seeing him. And let me tell you, um, being a political science junkie, I got involved in political science. I got involved in politics because of President William Jefferson Clinton. And really? Really. And he is to the Democratic Party what Ronald Reagan was to the Republican Party. I will tell you that is the only president that makes my panties wet. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'd like a man who's having having sex in the office. He's much less likely to push a button and kill us all. Right. And he was. He's real. I mean, look, look. They impeached him because he lied. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say that. They impeached him because he lied over Felicio. I mean, it is what it is. You know, that was between him and the future president of the United States, Hillary Clinton. But hey, you know. Yeah. You know, I know many guys who have lied over fellatio. But anyway. We so, have a lot going on. <laughs> we do have a lot going on. You Much know what? This like is election day. You know that marijuana legalization in three states, Oregon, D.C., and Alaska, are up today. Uh, Oregon, yes on 91. D.C., yes on 71. And Alaska, yes on 2. But we'll talk a little bit about that later. Don't forget Florida's amendment, Florida, too. Medical marijuana, yes on two, and sentence reform, yes on 47 for California. And those are the major policies that, that are going on. Um, but right here in our election and our processes and our dispensary. Dispensary, it's dispense and dispensary. I need to be with Dionne Warwick and her psychic friends because did I tell you or did I tell you right before the election, the winners of Nevada's cannabis licenses will be awarded. Did I not say that? Yes, Raymond, you did. Yes, Raymond, you did say that. And yesterday they announced all the winners, but the winners cannot really be named. All of them. The winners who will not be named. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> they, uh, the state had them sign a consent to release, and many uh, of the winners did not sign the consent to release. But Do you know why? Pride. I don't want, I don't want, if I didn't get it, I don't want people to know. Like, okay, like all those public hearings weren't enough to have you out in the public. Oh, but nobody watches those. Those are just public hearings. I'm like, oh, all my friends do. Right? I mean, I was there. You know? People stole the book that I wrote at some meetings. But, you know, hey. 
But yes, it, it, it is interesting to see some of the names that award, were awarded state licenses that were rejected by the county and the cities. Yes, and that's another one that you called, Raymond. People will be suing. Ah, wow. You know what? I, I think I'm just going to start a job as a fortune teller. I got that right. I got this right. And there was another that's, thing. There's I got no right. fortune telling because you know what? A lobbyist told me early, early, early on. Guess what? There's going to be a couple in each person's ward that they are going to award to to get to, you know, licenses. And those couple that will be awarded in those, you know, lice in those jurisdictions, those are be people that have deep pockets and paid those ward members or council members or Much commissioners like that have paid for their campaigns these past I don't know, umpteen million years. You know, I, I'm not going to speculate what, what may or may not have happened, but all I know is that Ross Goodman got awarded unanimously. Speaking of may or may not. Right. <laughs> and, and here's whose mama sat up there and... and, and As a mayor or may not. <laughs> As mayor and basically blasted us cannabis activists. Yeah. You know oh, what? this isn't legal. I don't know what's going to happen. Blah, 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 blah. You know what? You serve at the pleasure of your constituents. Your constituents voted this in what year? And you're still fighting against the people that you claim to represent? Well, you know, the thing is, Oscar, her husband, was just so friendly to us cannabis advocates. The first day that she came out with coffee with the mayor, I came out to talk with her, and it looked like she just, her gum tasted like caca or something. As soon as she started talking about me, her mouth pursed up like, mm. <laughs> I was like, oh no, she gonna be difficult, difficult to deal with. Absolutely. Well, and now her son's all on board. You know, I wonder if that caused a little riff in their household or not, or she just wanted to come out with a different stance than her husband. Well, she you know? probably didn't want to make it seem out like that she was actually backing her son when we all know she really was. Yeah. What I found very intriguing is that during the hearings, I, I watched them online. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, when the replay and I couldn't help but notice that the mayor was up at the dais, even though that she was abstaining yeah. from the process. I mm -hmm. thought that was um, a little heavy handed. Yeah, yeah, just a bit heavy handed. And, you know, the thing is, is that some of the local um, dispensaries that got awarded that that or that did not get awarded like New Leaf, they were number three in the state rankings. And the reason that Lois Tarkanian did not like them in her district is probably somebody else paid her a lot more money down the road on on uh, Charleston. But number two, there is a U-turn in front of their business. You know, I, I, I was at their business. I went to the public hearing, public community meeting that they held. And you know what? Tarkanian didn't show up to listen to her constituents. You know, and half the people that came up to complain didn't even live in a neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, like tear a cedar. Oh, I want to tear that cedar. Oh, my goodness. And, yeah. the, and the whole thing with the U-turn and all that, this, these, these arguments are so stupid because no matter what business goes in there, people are going to have to drive to it. And, and there's going to be a U-turn there. for Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, if, if the U-turn is such a problem, maybe they should fix the roads. Okay, so for cultivation in the county of Clark, we have New Leaf and Green Leaf Farms Holding that were awarded state licenses. Hey. For uh, North Las Vegas, we have New Veda, LVIG Holding, Lone Mountain Partners, the Coleman LLC, EMK Hydro Garden. All these were awarded. FS. WFL? I don't know. AFL CIO? I mean, no, I'm <laughs> just joking. My My Life Organics, MD Development. There's there's a lot up here. Well, in Henderson, Bioneva uh, got it for production. Uh, Agua Street for got it for production. And a bunch of consent oh. to release not provided. You know, many of these people did not want their names to be known. But in Clark County, and, and what were you going to say, Kurt? Well, everybody who went up for production got a yes, except for the one, one applicant in Nye County. Same Sucks with to manufacturing. be you. <laughs> <laughs> all the production and all the manufacturing facilities that applied were approved, except for one. Yeah, sucks to be them, huh? Yeah, they must have had some real problems with their application. Well, there's Same thing with cultivation. There was only one looking at the cultivation. Sorry to cut you off, John, but looking at the cultivation list, I only see one also in Nye County. Perhaps it's the same one that was rejected. All the rest of the cultivation was approved. 
Yeah, I, I would have to assume that it is the same one that for manufacturing and cultivation and I that got that got denied, and there's probably something really wrong with their application. Well, you know, and Raymond, you saying that they didn't get a they didn't get a city license, but then they got approval in at the state level. If that New Leaf, as a matter of fact, if New Leaf Farms got denied at city for dispensary, but got approved at state level and got a very high ranking, which they actually did, uh, I think it was number three for dispensaries, which is pretty darn good for the city of Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah, they're they. I mean, this is this is a prime example of when people are would be okay to sue. But, you know, the thing is, is that w- if they sue, would it put an injunction and stop everybody else from getting their license and beginning their businesses? It would be very intriguing. I know uh, New Leaf, their score was 189.71, right uh, behind... Out of 250. It was out of 250. I didn't know what it was yeah. out of. Um, right behind Medifarm, who, who had 197.72, and consent to release not provided was the first one. Yeah. So there's also some uh, news and some talk about um, Medmen, Medmen, Nevada. They got denied on the city license um, at, the, at the dispensary level because of the, one of their people, Adam Beerman, out of California, has like six or seven lawsuits against him. And he didn't disclose this to his partners, which are, are some friends of mine. I, I, you know, and these people are really good people. Um, Kathy Gillespie, A&B Printing. And she was on the news the other day talking about, you know, she she just wants to make sure to wait for to get her mail because they don't even know what's going on there. You know, they don't. I mean, if 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 Adam has stopped them from getting their state license, then what about their city or their, their I mean, their city license? And what about their state license? But now we already have the answers because everybody was approved except for one in nine. Well, except for the dispensaries. Yeah. Yeah, and I also have a list, but I didn't have a chance to digest it yet, is uh, the testing facilities. It looks like those that have applied for the testing might have all gotten those as well. But from Except what, for all but, one, All but actually. one in Clark all County. One. And was it named, the one that didn't? No, no. And it was actually not even the bottom of the list. There was one person that actually was below them. So it had to have been, once again, a deficiency in their application or something pretty heavy. Well, the state approved 55 out of the 199 dispensary applications it received, and the state also approved 182 licenses for cultivation, where obviously the cannabis will be grown, and 117, 117 licenses for production, where the cannabis will be infused into edibles, concentrates, and whatnot. 17 licenses for the laboratories, which will test the quality of the medicine, were also approved. But what's really interesting, what what, what baffles me, and being a math teacher, you know, I, I, I know numbers, but <laughs> the city of Las Vegas was awarded 12 licenses, correct? Correct. They approved 26 applicants. Yes. And now, I don't know or not if they're as educated as I may be, but it seems like they approved more than they're allowed. Well, they did that because they, under threat of lawsuit, that they were just going to approve, like, remember? Okay, remember Clark County? And they, you get a car, and you get a car. Yeah, really. Uh, remember Clark County, how they only approved 18 that they were going to send up to the state? And remember that? That, remember that? Irked, that irked me. You're not sending nothing. The applicants are sending it. I know. Yeah. I know that's irked you. But the thing is, the thing is, is that you know how many people were talking lawsuits after that shenanigans? Yeah, I say I was, right. know, I was the one, first you one were, that said you that. You were one of the first people to, to, to say that. Uh, the, now, the city has a choice whether they can just approve 12 or more. Now, the, uh, my belief is the only reason that the city did this was uh, to increase the revenues it received from the fees. That that could be so. Yeah, but they it, had the good. same fees. They had the same fees whether they got approved or denied because you have to do an application process. If they got approved, then the 26 can't pay double fees. Only 12 of them are going to be selected. And so that's not, I don't think that the, it's improving their fees. That's my take on it. I, I I have no idea. Well, you're the one that came out with the statement. <laughs> <laughs> Are you blonde over there? I'm 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 uh, it's election day. I got a lot of stuff going through my head and checking numbers. And yeah, everything. you know how many people have asked me who are you going to vote for for sheriff? And I said there's no nothing that says none of the above. 
Yeah. As, as a precinct committee man, I've been uh, checking uh, my uh, numbers all day to make sure that people voted and whatnot. It'll be interesting to see, though, when the second round of uh, state cannabis applications will be opened up. I, I don't think so. You're going to hear this here, and you're going to hear this often from me. The cl ranks are, are already closing. They're already setting it up so they can close the ranks at this legislative session in 2015. And I will be up there reporting live for Nevada Cannabis News um, because there are more there are more things that we face in, in Nevada than just these, uh, you know, dispensary approvals. Um, you guys know that I sat on the subcommittee for justice concerning medical marijuana for the state of Nevada. I was a, and I was a patient advocate. And you also fought for our right to continue to grow. Yes, and we got that until 2017. No, well, we don't. It's, it's not it. locked yet. No, but it's, it's that's what I'm going to be doing in 2015. And I encourage anybody that can come up to Carson City with me to come up with me and uh, talk to Tick and, and myself and some of the other people, uh, Christine Wildeveld, John Hansen, that, we, that we're all on this Senate subcommittee. Um, it basically, it talks about a bunch of different things that we that we did and that we needed to get approved like the people being able to retain their right to grow but didn't okay so the subcommittee approved that now it goes up to committee committee correct yeah now it goes up to committee committee okay yeah see that's that, that's the thing that i was thinking about Okay, and not only that, it, the DUID law, we have one of the lowest nanograms per deciliter uh, in your blood that of any other state. So even if you're a medical marijuana patient, you are not going to be, you can be charged with a DUID, which is a felony, a DUID in this state for um, having the, that amount of cannabis in your blood. Um, also, the sale and transportation of medical marijuana across county lines. I thought this was already approved. That's what I thought, too. Okay. I, I know that was discussed, one of the many things discussed at the subcommittee. Well, you know what? We're going to take a break, folks. And when we come back, we'll have our 420 moment. And we'll talk about some of these um, issues that are going to be facing uh, us in 2015 in legislature in Nevada. Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000. To get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. <laughs> welcome, oh God. welcome back. That sound indicated it's time for our 420 moment. And today, in honor of it being election day, we're going to honor George Washington. George Washington was the first president of the United States, and he was a founding father. He also grew hemp prior to prohibition in the 30s. Uh, you know that cannabis is a drug, but it's also hemp. It's a source of fiber, oil, and seed. Prior to its prohibition, the United States politicians were known for growing hemp, including George Washington. 
Washington had a vision of a great and powerful nation that would be built on Republican lines using federal power. He sought to use the national government to preserve liberty, improve infrastructure, open the western lands, promote commerce, and found a permanent capital, found a permanent capital reduce regional tensions, and promote a spirit of American nationalism. Oh, God, what happened? <laughs> At his death, Washington was eulogized as first in war, first in peace, and first in the hearts of his countrymen. And his last words were, "'Tis well." Must have been a bong hit right before he passed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in honor so of Election Day, George Washington... We salute you. <laughs> Don't forget to vote. What yeah, a reminder to sit on the back porch with him a few times, huh? Yeah, right. Really. <laughs> yeah, we know what he had his, in his pipe. All right. So uh, we were before we went on break. We st just started talking about uh, this legislative session in um, uh, 2015, in what February, March? Uh, somewhere around there. And just because. Just because dispensaries and everything have been approved does not mean that we need to stop advocating. We need to stop fighting for our rights as patients. So, you know, you got to make sure to stay out there and be engaged. Oh, yeah. We have many, many more years in this uh, this uh, battle uh, to end prohibition and to fight for patients' rights. So there's a lot of different things that need, need to be changed still, uh, including the fact that we all need to maintain our ability to grow and you know and safe medication at reasonable prices and that's why it's extremely important to get out and vote today i'm gonna keep on drilling that i'm sorry that's all right um so extending our time frame that we can grow from march 2016 to march 2018 um is just one of the things that's proposed it's not a done deal folks and so that means that you need to come up and lobby uh in carson city if that's if you are a patient advocate and you would like to uh get your voice out there talk to your assembly person talk talk to uh your your senator you need to, to speak to everybody that you can about what you feel uh are your rights as a medical cannabis patient it also we also need to go in and talk about drug court we need to talk about child custody and child abuse and neglect cases foster care um and the offender program of eligibility these are really serious issues and the reason that i'm that i'm really drilling this in is because there are a lot of family court judges that are up for re uh, election or re-election in this um in this election cycle and many children have been taken away from cannabis patients just simply because they were cannabis patients they were victimized by a system that was supposed to be there to help and protect them but unfortunately our system of justice turned them into victims because their parents just happened to be patients who use cannabis but if their parents were patients who used a bunch of uh, Oxys or Roxys or alcohol? Exactly. Then there would be no issue. And that's really sad. Yeah, it is really sad. Um, and so in this legislative session in March of 2015, it's really important for, for people to lobby on those issues also. But what about the people that are working? You have, you've, t this has touched your life, Raymond, if you don't mind kind of sharing your story. You're working, you're a cannabis patient, uh, somebody suspects you of using drugs, you test positive for cannabis, and you are a patient, and... I was terminated. I, I don't mind sharing my story, because it's important, and if I have to take the bullet, if I have to go on the line to help hundreds, perhaps thousands of other needy patients, so be it. I'll bear that cross. But I, w I was a Netflix call center representative. It's not like you were driving around. I'm not driving kids. a fork truck. I'm not working with heavy machinery. I'm not hanging from scaffolding. I'm answering phone calls. I'm your movie specialist. And I, who, what better goes with movies than smoking a J, huh? Exactly. I got to work at 3.30. There was no problem. Come 7 o'clock, my break. Oh, Human Resources wants to talk to you. You smell like cannabis. At 7 o'clock at night, where were you at 3.30 when I rolled in number one? Number two, I showered after I smoked and before I went to work. So how could I have smelled? I have no idea. But I got terminated for being a cannabis patient, regardless of the fact that I did have a medical marijuana card. Yeah. You know, so I provide testimony to the committee that you sat on to protect all employees. And I perhaps am, you know on the line for the work that I do and still being a cannabis patient and advocate, you know, but. 
Yeah, you know, and it's a real stress to people that are working, uh, being a cannabis patient and and working uh, anywhere. Because, I mean, now that I'm like, I'm kind of like out there. I, I, I was on news, this is a couple of years ago. And I came into work and, you know, it's like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And it's, uh, and then, you know, my boss called me in and said, well, don't let me smell you. Don't let me uh, smell you here at work. And I said, like, what? And he goes, yeah, we saw you on the news. It was just like, well, I've been a cannabis patient for like five years. So if you haven't smelled me yet. Then you probably aren't going to now. Yeah, exactly. So the only difference is now you're going to be coming near me and going, not now that I've been outed as a patient. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and I and I caught him a couple of times, and I'm like, "What do I stink? What's up? What's up?" Yeah, I, I I do the sniff test when I go to work, even even when I don't medicate, because I don't I don't medicate prior to going to work. No, I'm not talking about I'm right. talking about me sniffing around. I'm talking oh. about people that people that have seen me on the news. They sniff around they, you. They come near me and they're like, uh, "Hi, how are you?" I'm like, "Have you got a cold? <laughs> are you okay?" You okay? Uh, this is cray cray. You know what is cray cray? What it's is election cray? day. <laughs> You're and cray cray. It is. Uh, the Florida Amendment Number Two has uh, just above fifty percent of uh, polls suggesting support, but it's in insufficient to reach the sixty percent level required for a constitutional amendment. So they need to get at least 60% on Florida Amendment Number 2. Oregon 91, the legalization proposal appears headed for victory. Although the outcome is expected to be close, the latest polling found 52% of Oregonians, Oregonians. Mm -hmm. in support and 41 opposed. 41% opposed. Over in Alaska, what's up, Perry? Hi, uh, Perry. Uh, measure 2 appears to have the loss of support of a significant number of young voters and will likely be rejected by a slight majority of the voters perhaps 52 percent opposed and 48 percent support so that one's going to be a nail biter tonight uh but fortunately uh alaskans are already legally permitted to possess up to four ounces in their homes oh wow. only four only, only four, four. Mm -hmm. DC's Initiative 71, the legalization proposal, appears headed for an overwhelming victory, likely to gain the support of nearly 60% of the voters. Now, don't forget the uh, Chris Holland or whatever his name is, the U.S. representative for that district, mm -hmm. said that if DC passes it, he will attach an amendment to their funding appropriation and kill it. Chris Van Hollen, I believe that's his name. Uh, over in Guam, citizens residing in U.S. territory will decide on Proposal 14A, the Compassionate Cannabis Use Act. If approved, the measure would direct the Department of Public Health to regulate the use of marijuana as treatment for medical conditions. You know, from people from Guam, they like to be called Cheramayos. Cheramayos? I did not know that. Yes, because you know what? What would you call them? Guamanians? Possibly. We have a few others. Uh, Michigan, uh, there are 11 communities uh, that would be asked if they support making minor marijuana arrests the lowest law enforcement priority, effectively decriminalizing marijuana in those towns. Now, that means if somebody is jaywalking or smoking a J, they have oh, to go I... over there and deal with the jaywalker before they deal with the person smoking the J. You're absolutely right. That is that is correct. Over the over the past few years, uh, communities such as Hazel Park, Oak Park, Lansing, Ferndale, Detroit, Flint, and others have all previously passed similar marijuana initiatives. So right on, Michigan. Uh, over in Maine, two cities will have municipal initiatives on a ballot to fully decriminalize, some similar to the one approved by sixty percent of the voters in Portland in twenty thirteen. New Mexico, voters in two counties, Bernalillo and Santa Fe, will decide on non-binding countywide ballot measures asking citizens whether to reduce minor possession offenses from criminal misdemeanors to a fine-only civil offense, which it should be if you're not a medical marijuana patient or if you're just holding. 
Yeah. I mean, why should we why should we increase taxes that we pay as taxpayers to put someone in jail for cannabis? And that's just cray cray. They're going to they're going to jail for a plant. This is what we need to remind ourselves. This is Harmless a plant. plant. This is a plant. The only way this plant will hurt me is if it's bailed up and falls on me. Like you, a 200-pound bale, too. You know what argument I would actually have the uh, testicular fortitude to use in court? This is a plant given to me by the grace of God. Are you denying me access to my God? <laughs> and lastly, Massachusetts. Voters in eight districts will decide on non-biting public questions asking, shall the state representative from this district be instructed to vote in favor of legislation so that would non, allow the state to regulate and tax marijuana in the same manner as alcohol. Non-binding, yes, but historical at the same time, because the more and more states that allow this will force a national constitutional amendment. Hallelujah. I, I believe we need 34 states. Super majority. To have approval. Yes, it's a super majority. And then once all those dominoes are just toppled over, then it will be 36 states. And then it will be a super majority. And guess what? We are free, my Lord. We are free, to quote Dr. Martin Luther King. Hey, do you know who got a, a medical marijuana license here in uh, Las Vegas? I know several people that got marijuana licenses. Pro poker player Phil Ivey. All right. Hey, Phil. He, you know what? He's won a bunch of rings and stuff, hasn't he? He's like, he's. they say that he's like one of the best poker players, one of the world's best all-around poker players. And um, he got he got approved for one of the 26 approved licensed dispensaries in the city. Um, and that he has 10 World Series of Poker bracelets. Wow. That's a lot. But he only made it through the uh, the city round. We haven't. He has Don't know if he's on that state list or not. He only one got one denied. The, well, what dispensaries. Are the dispensaries. Yeah, that's true. There's 26 that got approved, and there's only 12 that are going to get them. So, Phil, good luck to you. So there you go, Phil Ivy. Here's a little uh, interesting entertainment news. Uh, you know. Uh, we all kind of can assume that Neil Young uses cannabis, right? Why would we assume anything? <laughs> and man, that dude is old. <laughs> well, so? Well, old people need love too, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you that, are just straight up cray cray today. But I know. Neil Young, uh, when he uses cannabis, he has a marijuana induced paranoia, which is uh, that's. A slightly common side effect. I've heard it from some people uh, that when they use, they get a little bit paranoid. I only get paranoid the cops. <laughs> <laughs> As with many creative geniuses, Young has, uh, has peppered marijuana use uh, through various stages of his career. In 2011, he took an extended leave of absence from the stuff in order to gain a different pers perspective while writing his memoir, Waging Heavy Peace. Luckily for Young, marijuana is back in his life, and as we learned during his recent interview with Howard Stern, the singer admitted to smoking weed on rare occasions at nowadays, which prompted a discussion about paranoia. Stern noticed that he had given up weed due to the oft-cited side effect, and Young came back with a remedy, peppercorns. What? Peppercorns? Yep. Says, try black pepper balls if you get paranoid, he said. <laughs> just two, just chew two or three pieces. I found this out myself. Try it. Neil is not crazy. In fact, marijuana.com first covered the rumored remedy for weed-induced paranoia back in August. While the piece doesn't suggest actually chewing the peppercorns, a study suggested that inhaling the pepper's aroma would do the trick. Medical studies can vary. So if you get pepper sprayed by the cops, you're going to be okay. <laughs> You lose your buzz. <laughs> <laughs> just, just chew on some black balls. You'll be fine. Medical studies can vary in the efficacy and reliability, but Neil is infallible with his expert recommendation. He says all cannabis users who suffer from paranoid side effects should keep this common kitchen good close at hand. Well, so I'll tell you, you know, you know what? The, I used to get paranoid when I smoked cannabis, uh, you know, and right up until the time my card arrived in the mail. And then when my card arrived in the mail, I started doing a dance. I was like, oh, yes. 
And then yeah, you know, then I didn't. I stopped getting really paranoid. Like half the paranoia went away, like automatically. Is it that okay? That card is to us is like a blanket is to Linus. That is true. <laughs> that is true. What else you got over there for us? Well, disc golfers. Can you believe that they're being unfairly targeted? Who? Disc golfers. Frisbee golf. If, if you've never seen or heard of this sport, people throw frisbees into these little basket things, and they're like so many like yards away, and they have special frisbees for it, and and you know. Yeah, we 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 had that in Indiana, but but I mean. Okay, well, yeah. what does frisbee golf have to do with cannabis or marijuana? I don't know. So you tell me. The poor frisbee golfers are being profiled as cannabis users, and so if people, if cops see them playing frisbee golf, they profile them and they follow them, and they tell them that they smell like pot. Want to search their cars because they if have they, frisbee golf equipment. In Iowa, a cop followed a guy, and then uh, because he observed Frisbee golf equipment in his vehicle, he asked for permission to search the car, to which your answer should be no. Frisbee, frisbee golf? You don't need no equipment. You need a dog on Frisbee. Well, yeah, they're special Frisbees, and they have like little bags, and they carry the bags around. You know who does it? As a matter of fact, the executive director of Normal Las Vegas, Hawaiian Brian. Oh, there's a cannabis user. Let's profile him. He's a Frisbee golf player. Well, I was going to say there is a correlation there because I do know the only person I know that plays Frisbee golf is a, a big stoner. You know what's awesome about Frisbee golf? What? Is you can flip your Frisbee over and use it as a tray. That's it. That's it. We've solved the, we've solved the issue right here on this program. That is why Frisbee golfers get into Frisbee. Cheekies. Because they turn the frisbee upside down and they're using it as a rolling tray. And in using it as a rolling tray, they said, you know what would be great? If I could throw this frisbee into like this little basket, it'd be like golf, except not. It's frisbee. I'm, I'm willing to bet that frisbee golf was invented by stoners. Say it ain't so. <laughs> kind of like hacky sack. <laughs> Yeah, like I'm I'm pretty willing to bet that the people that play hacky sack, a good majority of hacky sack players also smoke pot. Who who whoever sat and said, Hey, let's hit let's hit a little ball on our feet. Well, I think that came out of like soccer and Africa and you know, like all the a other bean countries. Bag, except, a little bean bag. Well, all the other, other countries except America that call football soccer. Well, I, I would I would be willing to bet that if we got accurate numbers on about the the actual people who come out of the closet that actually use pot, that you could pull any sport and a majority of the people actually use. Hey, use. Lance Armstrong. <laughs> hey, Lance. Hey, there's a support a sport you can compete in. <laughs> what swimming? Me? No, Lance. Oh. <laughs> I know he might get tested for that one too. So another election day news we have a. Uh, uh, Oregon, Alaska, D.C. voters uh, wished to weigh in on... Uh, on Didn't we just talk aid. about yeah. this? Uh, but in, in this thing here, they're saying roughly one in four Americans say they have used pot, according to a Rutgers polling. So so if we could get all the people that are still hiding in the closet and afraid to say that they actually use this medicine, I'm sure that number would be higher. And as soon as you come well, out wait the a closet... Second. So we, it, got, we got how many people in this room? One, two, three, four, maybe five people that use cannabis um we can't tell about the fifth one uh anyway so the thing is is that in in, in a room and i've been in i've been in uh carson city i've been in our legislative building i've been in our ca state capitol i've talked to people at democratic dinners i've talked to people at libertarian dinners all the libs do i'm telling you right now all the libs get high um republican dinners they just don't admit the shit <gasps> oh oh Anyway, in the Republican dinners, they just don't admit it. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, but a majority of people that are around you, I would have to say 80% of people that are around you are cannabis patients. And you'd be surprised. It's uh, some of the least people you would expect. You are absolutely right. I've been at some functions and, you know, having some people ask if I had medication and who they were was like, wow. Yeah. Shocking, huh? Yeah. Shocking. 
Well, I mean, before I came out, and I used to run. Yeah, I used to. Um, I used to be a run veterinary clinics, and so I had employees under me, and and you know, and they wouldn't invite me out for stuff, and I'd be like, well, you know what? Why don't they invite me out for stuff? It's because they all got high, and they were afraid that I would fire them. No, what you do off work is off work. Yeah, they didn't know that because I was such. You know, nervous Nelly at work. Well, it is election day. We have a break coming up. Uh, go uh, pull the car over, find a place to vote, and we'll be right back. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. Welcome back to Nevada Cannabis News. And yes, we welcome back to Cannabis, Nevada Cannabis News. And we are going to talk about regional news now. So not just cannabis news in Nevada, but how about Arizona? What's going on with Arizona? Arizona to be the next legalization battleground. A poll conducted way back when in February by Behavioral Research Center showed that Arizonians. Arizonians, yes, are ready for a change with how many? 51% say that they think that the sale of marijuana should be legal in that state. Uh, only 8% that says that they're undecided. Prohibitionist groups are likewise making themselves heard and representing 41% of those that oppose legalization. The Arizona County Sheriff and uh, Attorney uh, issued a resolution opposing any medical marijuana legalization efforts. Have you seen it? It begins with, whereas we are committed to the success and positive future of our youth. Never mind all the drug stores and uh, alcohol stuff that we approve and da 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 da. Well, you know, State Representative Ethan Orr argues that his colleagues that uh, should handle legalization in Arizona legislature rather than relying on the ballot box. Why? So it can be put in the hands of lobbyists and those who pay and those who are get paid in, in speaking of lobbying. We've seen around the country how representatives don't represent the will and the voice of the people. Yeah. So if doing it through the ballot box is the way to do it, so be it. You know what? I would rather it be through the ballot box than through legislature because you know what? You're right. So many of the legislative representatives don't rep represent the people that they were elected by because suddenly a big a big pharma comes in like Pfizer or uh, Roan Mary U or Mariel. One of those big, huge pharmaceutical companies comes in and suddenly their campaign is paid for for the next 10 15 years by pfizer and you know what they're going to do exactly what pfizer wants them to do and, and that's unfortunate for the little people like us because we're just average american citizens and why should we count because we don't have billions of dollars to throw away on elected 
officials to bribe them because that's exactly what it is is a bribe well you know what that's why i really um uh would like for everybody to get out and vote uh, first of all and if michelle fiore is on your ballot vote for her because you know what she was one of those people one of the one of the only republicans that did not take money from her campaign from pfizer last year at uh, Carson City. So you know what? She's one of the lone Republicans that that said w- that what she did, and she stood behind it, and she didn't get paid off by big pharma. She stood behind the people that that you know put her there. And I talked to Michelle, and she did it. She did it for the right reasons. And listen to her tell her story of why she did it. You know, I'm I'm of opposite political beliefs of her, but you know, I, I wholeheartedly support her for the the decision. Sticking to her guns, man. Yes. You know, Michelle loves guns. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Lucy Flores also, uh, who's running for lieutenant governor, has been a strong advocate for medical marijuana as well. She she is. She's run, running for lieutenant governor, Miss Lucy Flores is, but she's running against a Republican who actually did something. Mark Hutchinson put his name on SB 374, and then he stood behind it. So, uh, as far as your gerrymandering going on, Mark Hutchinson actually did something, and Lucy didn't. So... Yeah. You know, I, I'm a dem too. I'm, you know, so in me, oh. in me saying go to for Hutch, you know, you know that's just a can. That's a one voter issue right there. Oh, well, you know, yeah. See, that's a single issue. I mean, I'm looking at the whole thing. Marijuana. Oh, I bet initiative. you're looking at Miss Lucy the whole thing. Hey, uh-huh. hey, hey. Marijuana initiative backers unveil Halloween themed mobile billboard highlighting the relative safety of marijuana compared to alcohol. Hey, speaking of <laughs> Halloween, right quick, y'all should have been out on uh, Old Fremont. Was it? Were we on Old Fremont? We were. We were on Old Fremont. We went down Thirteenth Street, and then we uh, down Fremont between Thirteenth to Seventh. Yeah, for thirteenth to seventh, and marched in the parade. Halloween parade, the fifth time that we were in there. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. We had a DJ, DJ Shifto, right up on the front of our float. We had Magic Mike with the magic carpet. We had Beach dancing from the second we rolled out. Man, I feel sorry for that dude. He was probably worn out the next day. No, he... you know what? I think I think that he's a marijuana patient, and he was boogieing and all the, the whole, whole entire time. time. You know what? And that he, you know what? I know he got it for a shoulder injury, but he was holding his arms up like that John Travolta. And Doing up the whole down. disco thing. I was loving it. But back to Maine, this Halloween thing, the billboard, it's sat- satirizing. Am I saying that correct? <laughs> yes. Satirizing reefer madness style propaganda calls question to a safer marijuana policy for Lewiston because it would allow adults to use a substance that is, quote, less toxic. <laughs> Less addictive and less scary than alcohol. Right on, right on. Reefer Madness. And speaking of uh, the Halloween stuff, oh yeah, all the all the uh, post Halloween warnings from Denver police and all that about the cannabis infused uh, Halloween candy. There was a pre Halloween fervor going on. Now they got a post Halloween fervor. Well, yeah, nothing happened. Imagine that it fall it falls into the uh, the old uh, the old you know. The old uh, things Scare with the, tactics the urban nothing? legends about poison chocolates and candy bars spiked with razor blades and, and stuff like that. And the needles hanging out of them. Yeah, I mean. I've never had a razor blade in my apple. Me neither. You know, I've my, never had a All needle. my years of trick-or-treating and growing up as a kid, I, I never saw one. I never heard of anybody hearing of this. This just seems to be something that they try to scare kids with every year. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's a Halloween man. tactic. And plus, who would give away their Halloween candy to children? I mean, their medicated candy to children. I know. That's, I that's mean, not that's cheap. I mean, that's mine. <laughs> that's mine. I sure as Give them a full-size candy bar cheaper than that. Yeah, that's what Perry did. <laughs> oh, yeah. I should have gone trick-or-treating over his house. Hey, Perry, if you got some candy, send it my way. You know he doesn't. <laughs> Well, this first Friday is we have our first Friday booth, um, and this then Friday. we this have our patients meeting this Saturday. So it's like back to back this weekend. No, it's second Saturday. This is first Friday, right? Yeah, it's second first Saturday, Friday, but the is second Saturday. This Saturday coming up because Saturday was the first. The first. Shut the front door. Friday, wow. October thirtieth. Saturday. You're right. I'm sorry. It's just it was a wild weekend. Yeah. It has been a wild weekend. That that Halloween Day parade. We got six, I think, six different sponsors to like sign up with us to march with us. It really felt good. Our theme was "Together We Can." And those banners were really nice looking. 
the banners were really nice looking and there were representatives from every like, organization almost almost every organization we invited every single one of the organizations and those that showed up they showed up if those that didn't hey they didn't but i'll tell you what there were six organizations that were representative wholeheartedly and then there were like three that just this put in money for the float but whatever you did and however you helped i really like to thank everybody that was involved with this project absolutely um it was it was super fun people got to sit and go the whole entire route on on a uh uh, you know, on a flatbed so they didn't have to march, and, you know, if they were less abled. Mm -hmm. um, we made Kurt, we made Raymond march, though. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all made me roll. <laughs> Raymond rolled along with us. Um, and so it really felt good. There were, I think, three or four people in wheelchairs. There was a person on a, on a, a trike with, you know, a big motorcycle. And then we had our float, and then we had a, a little float behind. I think marching with us, we had at least, what, 15, 20 people? Yeah, we had a, we had a, quite a few people. We, out there. we had a nice little entourage going on, and and um, you know, I just I just want to second what Jennifer said here, and sincerely thank everybody that came out and got involved. I know we as a community, um, we have a lot of issues that we need to address on on the state level as well as on national level, and it, it's it's soothing to see that we can push push on the side our differences and come together and do things for our community. For sure, for sure. Speaking and we have a job fair coming up too. November 16th, we have a job fair coming up. Um, if you want to read about all the stuff that's going on in the community, we, there's a new magazine called Vegas Cannabis Magazine. Which we'll have at First, first Friday. Friday. We'll have it out at First Friday. So come and collect a copy. It's a free magazine and it talks about everything that's going on in uh, Vegas. Uh, so that's some more local news that we've got going on there. Uh, I'll be down there first Friday as always so feel free to come down and say hi yeah, give him a nug it's gonna be a cold one out there so dress warm bundle up hey yeah. are you gonna have a little space heater I don't know if we're gonna have a space heater we'll probably have uh, some hot chocolate though Ooh. we will have like hot chocolate or hot coffee or something like we did last year that was pretty fun yeah. <clears throat> so come out for our job fair we have a lot of events going on um, yeah. every Tuesday some Nevada cannabis news and listen to us and you, you can easily find all this information like us on facebook join us up on meet meet up follow us on twitter subscribe to our youtube is there anything else we have i think i don't know i think that's enough of stroking us listen <laughs> speaking about israel <laughs> well i didn't know how to segue into that um there there is a huge 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 medical marijuana company um meaning repair the world tikam olam uh that was founded in 2006 and you know what they do they have 4000 patients and the patients pay a hundred dollars monthly membership fee that's not tied to any specific quantity of marijuana and they are allowed to have their medical cannabis you know for that month they have 4,000 patients, and this is a government-sponsored program. Can you believe that? Oh, we have a government-sponsored program in the United States as well, but apparently only four patients left have access to that medication. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> They have high THC strains for severe pain and uh, anti-inflammatory CBGC strains that have no psychoactive effect. And if we could get patients back on our government-sponsored program, first let's get that supermajority of 36 states, then get people back on the national program. I think that would be two good places to, to start really rolling out a national program for us. So we're talking about that. We have our patients meeting on Saturday. We are giving away door prizes. So if you come down to our patients meeting, you can win a door prize. It's a smoking apparatus. First Friday. You come out to First Friday, our booth. It's in between the Artifice and the Arts Factory. Come visit us. If you can't visit us, uh, visit us on Facebook, Weekend 702. And go vote. Go vote, go vote, go vote. If you have not voted, go vote. If you've already voted, take vote a friend again. to vote. <laughs> vote again. Vote for your red dead relative. That's oh. right. If you don't vote, you can't complain. That's Ed. right. All right. That's all we have for today. We'll be back next week. So we'll hopefully see you on Friday and Saturday. All right. Have a good day. Be safe, everybody. Go vote.